The team and I are preparing for the launch of Asheville Plant Hire. At the 15 million pound house, we're gonna start marking out and then start digging. The BBC are in the yard filming for the morning news. And at long last, after many attempts, the scammers finally get us and we are seriously out of pocket. I'm Daniel and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 133. This episode of Asheville Weekly is sponsored by Klarna. It's Monday morning and I'm in the yard. It's gonna be a good week. We are winning. And we've got a little bit of a blockage here uh, because the train is in at the moment and we have all the lorries trying to get into the yard to get loaded. Your boy's gonna be on BBC News tomorrow. They're gonna ask me questions about the construction industry, uh, which I'm not sure, but I think I am qualified to answer in some way. And my name's Daniel Asheville Louisi. I'm the director of the Asheville Group of Companies. I think that is gonna to be too loud. You see, a couple of weeks back, I was talking about the backups and what we're gonna do with the cloud stuff. Well, now I've made a decision. We're actually gonna have another QNAP, like the one we've got already, and we're gonna have 200 terabytes of um, normal storage, and we're gonna put that somewhere else, and it's gonna back up each night. That's the plan, anyway. It's been extremely difficult and it continues to be challenging. We used to have about 40 tradesmen in-house the entire time. Now with contracts that come in, we dissect them into smaller parts and then we subcontract the work out to companies. Think you got it? Yeah. Sorry, just because that was noise, I thought I'm just going to ask the Mate, it's all right. It's all right. so good at the top. I was yeah. like, I just want to get make sure that we get that in the Yeah, can. that's fine. Nice one. We're absolutely flat out in the yard at the moment. We've got a thousand ton going out. We've got our lorries loading, we've got Agri Industries lorries loading, we've got day aggregates loading, we have a training. And while this is all happening, work is continuing at the refurbishment project. You're Fine. saying be, being electric is not a category of its own. Yeah. Terry and I are putting our heads together, um, working out how we're gonna assign fleet numbers for the new plant hire kit that's coming in. It was Terry's idea. Terry had a great idea. So we've come up with a way to give everything fleet numbers that moving forward, when the system goes in place, hopefully it could generate it, but we can keep an eye on all the machines and based on the fleet number, we're gonna know where they are and you can read a fleet number and know exactly what it is. No matter what, it's APH, Asheville Plant Hire. Then we have subcategories, 01 excavators, 02 dumpers, 03 material handlers, etc. The next is the size. So we have letters going between one ton and up to 100 ton. Based on that subcategory, then we have a fleet number, so 001, 002. And then finally, based on the fuel, whether it's diesel or electric, because we've got some electric excavators coming, that is how we give something a model number so the very first 14 tonner that arrived last week its fleet number is APH 01 F 001 D it's a good system I like Tessa yeah well done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the BBC stuff I filmed earlier it's going to be on TV at 6 a.m. tomorrow and at lunchtime but then the BBC called me back and I'm on BBC radio at 7 a.m. At the moment, I'm all BBC'd out, man. So, uh, <laughs> so I'll be back. I'll be back on the radio in the morning. Bye. That's it. The time now is, what's the time, man? Terry's, Terry still ain't done a day's work. The time now is 5.52. And we're gonna go through the rest of this uh, procedure, get meds to put it on paper, get it up in the office so everybody knows how to do it and we can assign all the kit we've got a fleet number. We sent a note to all the drivers to make sure that they lock up all the lorries, take the keys out, keys are in the safe and all the machines as well. So I thought I'd take a walk around the yard and check. Every single lorry was locked, all the keys were in the safe, all the machines were secure. It's a good end. It's a good end to Monday. We're winning. We're winning. <laughs> Dan Friday has just, what is he doing? This man's got ma bread in his beard and everything. It's Tuesday and we're in the yard. And after me gassing last night about being on BBC radio as well, they called me last night and canceled me. So I was only on BBC this morning. So um, 
What I've got to say about this is my mum is really proud. And so am I. Look at this. For the Bank of England to keep raising interest rates. Look at the construction industry, which, as we know, is being hit by the rising cost of materials. It is, mate. You are correct. All good? Business has been challenging up and down. Uh, it's been consistently inconsistent. Like them bars, consistently inconsistent. A year ago, construction companies like this builder of Grand Design Style Renovations... Grand Design Style Renovations! Are they stupid? Woohoo! Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Boy. Now, why did my eyes... Oh, hold on, let's... Oh, no! Right, hold on, let's go back to where we were. There we go, there we go. Look at that. I'm feeling that. Anyway, BBC is a big thing for me. This is the BBC. Times have changed now, and a lot of people want to watch television on demand. When I was young, you'd be playing football at the park all day. You have to run home because Big Break will be on. It's only a game, so put up a real big fight. Do you remember that tune? And then after that was Match of the Day, and you had to watch it when it was on television. I'm really happy that this has gone well, and my mum really loves this as well. The entire population of St. Lucia is already aware of this. My mum has sent the video to everyone. So thanks mum and thanks to everyone who watched. Anyway, downstairs we have a fuel delivery and a client of mine came to visit me and he showed me a couple of projects what he has got coming up. And for the first time ever, I was able to sit down with someone. He said, you got the concrete, you could do the muck away, you could supply me with the aggregates. But then he needed some machines. And I was able to provide him with four machines for this job, especially for the external work where he needs to um, do some utilities and infrastructure. So I'm happy that Asheville Plant Hire can, like, you know, begin to supply service to our existing customers before we start to go out to new ones. The train didn't come in when we thought it would. The time is 12 minutes past six. We are parking this train up and we're gonna to begin to offload this train when we get here in the morning. The train was late because it got held at a signal um, in Ealing somewhere. We well, started out a day that was going so well, didn't end the same way. Remember two weeks ago, I told you about the emails coming through, posing to be me and asking other members of staff to make payments. Well, they got me today. New member of staff here with bank authorization. They emailed them pretending to be me because I was in a meeting. So the member of staff thought that because I was in the meeting, I was emailing them from my phone. So it said my name, it had my signature. But if you really looked at the email and didn't read my name, it wasn't my proper email. Barclays blocked the payments and they called my member of staff and said, hold on a minute, this doesn't sound right. But my member of staff is seeing an email and the automatic reaction is looking and seeing my signature and looking at it and thinking, yeah, well, it's come from here and they've authorised it. I've walked into the office after my meeting and they said, oh, Barclays gave me so much trouble with these payments. I'm like, what payments? They're payments you told me to make. I, said, I didn't tell you to make any payments. I looked at the email, the email was slightly different. We are now £20,000 down, but the bottom line is, Barclays said, is this a fraudulent payment? And we said, no, it's not, make the payment. So I am 20,000 pound down. Do you know how many lorries have to go up and down and drivers you have to pay in diesel and tires and rent in electric and water and sand and muck and tipping and breakdowns and R&M and building and emails and then talking and cash flow and credit management and staff and office and yard workers. Do you know what it takes to clear 20 grand after all of that? And then it just goes like that. That's what I get for talking on weekly and saying, oh, they tried to, they tried to do this and they tried to do that. Well, do you know what? You must be watching this. So you got me, there we go. Wednesday morning and I'm in the car on the way in and it um, feels a little bit surreal taking a 20 grand hit just out of nowhere you wake up today and it's like did that happen and then you have a look at the account and you're like yeah it did loads of ideas going through your head what you're gonna do the measures you're gonna put in place are you angry are you upset are you disheartened what can you put in place to stop it again is it your fault probably is my fault for the fact that 
whoever was doing it knew exactly who to target and they only knew who to target because of the various platforms which I put information on. I don't know any other company this has happened to. It's very difficult to swallow, but what am I supposed to do? I just got to carry on as best I can. I do need a little bit of cheering up though. This is the Vodafone voicemail service. I thought Michael would uh, give me some stick this morning and cheer me up, but even that's not possible. <sighs> okay, let's get this trainer sand offloaded. You know, at the moment, it's a crazy time for us. We're hiring videographers looking to expand the team and I've been traveling a lot and I need some noise canceling headphones for those long international flights. There are so many options and I wanna get the best price. So I use the Kalana shopping app. I use this price comparison feature for all my tech needs to find the right kit at the right price. Kalana is the latest search and compare app that compares prices from thousands of retailers. Let's open the app. Noise canceling headphones who has them more importantly at what price i'm going to use the good time to buy section so this shows me the typical price variations so i can make an informed decision about the price that i'm paying so i now have the right tech kit at the right price when it's time for some new kit download the kalana app search and compare to find great kit at a great price this is the Vodafone voicemail. This is the Vodafone, this is the Vodafone. How can your phone be off on a working day? I'm just going through the plan at Andrew Southerns for the soak away and the drainage on the football pitch. What we're gonna do is have a big soak away in the middle and then we're gonna run trenches going in every corner. Then it should go through the pipes and go to the soak away and that should manage all the rainwater there. It's not a very scientific drawing, but it will work. I just wanna say firstly, the champ is here. Congratulations, okay. Dan Aziz, British, Commonwealth, and European light heavyweight champion. If we look back, we'll see when Dan came here before. <laughs> Dan never had no belts, yeah? And when I would message Dan, he would get back to me fast. <laughs> all now two weeks, three weeks for man to get back to me enough. Listen, uh, you're also changed. He was using an Oyster card when he first came. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> four by four, pull up outside, <laughs> private <laughs> plates. <laughs> and to match the private no, plates, no. there's a private attitude. Yeah. yeah. To my WhatsApp. I don't listen to them, you know, I've been working away. And yeah, this is the fruits of my labor. I've brought it back for them to come and see because True say they've been there from the start when I'm fighting Quay up in some leisure center before I got any belts. No stuttering, no nothing. See the Polish yeah, media I'm response? Better, I'm getting better, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard him talking smoke on Sky Sports as well. And I ain't gonna say nothing. But a minute ago, he was calling out some fighters. I will but we're gonna, but we're gonna, we're gonna hold that down. The Asheville Urban Lawyers boxing promotion team. There's a couple of fights we're trying to put together. QPR Stadium is a possible venue. The money's yeah, got to be it. right, Allah. That's it. The money's got to be right. Yeah. The money's got to be right, Tunde, Allah. Hundred percent. Yeah, but on a serious note, we want to congratulate Dan for his achievements, and these are the fruits of his labour. And we've seen him come up. So congrats, Dan. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate, I appreciate that, you, man. man. And now, hopefully. QPR are going to turn it round, man. Please, man. I can't watch us lose again. Yeah. I'm fuming, man. Yeah. <laughs> you do get up for a couple of hours every day, eh? Why didn't you return my phone call yesterday? And why was your phone off? My phone wasn't off. My phone was on airplane mode. What airplane was you on? Can't tell you. Well, where are you? I'm in my yard in Tottenham now. You didn't fly to Tottenham? <laughs> <laughs> All my mates and all the bell rang and told me to... Oh, your, 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 your friend is on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what was he saying? He, he wasn't he wasn't saying a lot. Tell him about weightlifting or something, is he? <laughs> You shouldn't be talking about tippers or skips us because you know nothing about that job. I was talking about the construction industry as a whole, Michael, how it's been affected. I don't think they could have done it in your yard. The beaten down rust bucket crusher would have been flat out in the background. Nobody could hear a thing. 
it, you know, it was, there's another engine that can't start properly in the background. There would have been, there would have been lorries with the cab off and the radiator on the floor in the background. I saw one of your skip lorries with the white cab and the blue body just drove past me a minute ago. Yeah, that's our new company colors. Do you want to know the real story? I do. They were cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and now you've actually got three new lorries on the road that ain't a 06 plate or a 04 plate. It's fantastic. <laughs> Yay! You're full of it this morning, isn't you? I was talking to Terry this morning, funny enough. He was crying. He, he was looking for a job. And I said, sorry, Terry. I said, I'd love to take you off it, mate. I said, but the Amarok probably would make it to here every morning. <laughs> Have a good day. You too, mate. Thursday morning and I'm in the car heading in. It's a bright sunny day. QPR only managed a one all draw and we're sitting just above the relegation zone. As if my nerves weren't bad enough. Just popped round to Andrew Southern's house for a lunchtime meeting. We've taken all the turf out. We've marked out the trenches. The biggest machine we could get in here can't dig deep enough. So we have to make a platform a meter down, bring the digger down to that level and then dig out the main soakaways. And when we do our work here, we're gonna take all the earth from over there. We're gonna pull it all out to repair this area over here once we've done the work. And then the majority of that area, that is gonna be filled up with stone. About to work out if last time was a fluke. I've got the lift on it, but a bit too much lift. Football's gone. Hey, look at the model employee, yeah? <laughs> right, look, man's got all the gear. All right, let's do a flashback to when Maddie first started and he was in the Daft Tipper. And let's have a look when Maddie moved into the Scania Tipper. Then Maddie moved into the Baby Grab. And now Maddie is on the Big Grab. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Bro, you all now you left man hanging, bro. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, innit? <laughs> Let's take the load. make sure I don't get this the wrong way around. So this is a type one granite and the 6F5 is also a granite. But tomorrow we have type one limestone coming in. That's coming from a different quarry altogether. So we've made space in this bay over here. So the lads have spent the last couple of hours moving it. So now I'm gonna check, oh, we're loading someone. We've got the shovel loading lorries and we've got the 926 pulling the stone off the wall, trying to completely clean it because we don't want any contamination. Thank goodness that I surrounded these bays with steel because the amount of pressure that's been banging against these walls and especially when you put the machine on top of this, the way it's pushing the weight down and spreading the weight everywhere, the bays are still holding up. Friday morning and I'm in the yard. At this exact moment, I was meant to be on the M1 heading up to Liverpool to have a look at a volumetric lorry. However, I got a text message last night which says, sorry mate, I sold it to someone else. Good for him, bad for me, but I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't looking, to, looking forward to four hours driving up there and four hours driving back. But some things are going right because the train has arrived in the yard and I'm happy to say it is a different material. This is a type one limestone, which should more or less cover the specification for all projects. Nice.
time is 20 past eight. I'm the last one left in the yard. Tried to look for, uh, see if there are any volumetrics about, but volumetrics are a very specific thing to buy. Volumetrics before 2018, they have the upgraded chassis, which mean they're technically upgraded to a Scania to 43 ton and a Volvo to 44 ton. The newer ones, I don't believe they are because they're only allowed to go up to 32 ton in weight, which would basically just turn to spaghetti if you had the same amount of weight on it because it's not designed for that. I think the best thing to do is speak to people I know and people who I know run lorries well because when I get hold of the lorry it's not going to be a rust bucket and it's not going to be a problem with it. It's all like when people come and buy a lorry off me they know the lorry's been looked after and if they don't believe in me they believe in the Scania R&M or the Volvo R&M or they know my townie the fitter and they know that he is by far the best fitter in London. Michael O'Donovan will vouch for that. Speaking of lorries we had one in Scania that needed an engine rebuild what can you do? It happens. The lorry is now out on the road working, even though it was down for a while. Of the £20,000 we lost in the free payments, seven and a half came back today. We don't know how it came back. The bank haven't said a word to us. I hope some more of the money shows up, but if it doesn't, we'll carry on anyway. That's it for Friday, man. I'll be in the yard tomorrow. Are you, are you at the yard? No, I'm here. I'm here. I ain't got anywhere. Uh, I, I need to. I've been told by Vesha to put the printer in your front. So stop what you're doing now and do that now. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. It's, it's Saturday and we're in the yard. We're launching Asheville Plant Hire properly on uh, Monday. So I'm just checking what chains we've got in the yard. Simon's gone into the secret stash. These chains are three ton. So these are going to be suitable uh, when we move these smaller machines. But for like a 13 tonner, there's going to be such pressure on it because it's on a flatbed and we're lifting the flatbed on and off the roll on roller. Ordinarily, we would put two chains on a 13 ton machine, but because of the pressure that's going to be on it, we'd probably we'll put three on it just to make sure it holds it securely. I need to order a couple of ratchet straps as well. But what I'll do, take these away now and these will be in a bag and these will be put into the storage because there isn't enough space on the lorry to hold a full set of these, a full set of ratchet straps, and a full set of the 10 ton chains as well when they arrive. I've just come round to the back to take a look at some of the machines. Uh, I have a post going out on LinkedIn, a couple of social media posts. We have an email going out to our existing client base. Basically every platform where we can possibly let everybody know about Asheville plant hire. A couple times in my life I had them, um, oh the birds are in the trees. A couple times in my life, I had like a, a burst of inspiration and I got a little bit of butterflies in the stomach, like this is a great idea, this is gonna do well. First time was when we we're gonna start building and doing construction. Second time, said we we're gonna run lorries. I remember where I was when that happened. I was standing outside our showroom in Kings Road and there was an aggregate industries lorry over the road. That was in 2012. Who would have thought in 2023, we'd be providing aggregate industries with service and they'd be running trains into us and we'd be doing haulers for them. And it only started when I saw their lorries over the road working. Look at that. When we start doing concrete, when we were going to open the railhead, and now we plant higher. The machines aren't going to look this good for very long. I just thought I'd come and have a look before I head back to the office. The team are working hard to get the video uploaded, make sure we schedule it for tomorrow so there's no sleepless night tonight. <sighs> Sunday evening, the time is 9.16. I'm just signing off now. We are ready to go tomorrow with plant hire. And I was looking through all the procedure paperwork, what we did, the stuff I discussed, we were doing materia the other day. I actually thought to myself, I need to do the same thing in Asheville Entertainment and the likes of Frighty, who's the longest serving. He knows them all off by heart, but new people coming into the business, Frighty might not be there the entire time. We're gonna create more procedure documents and those procedure documents are going to be on the wall in a videographer office. Whenever I do my flying lessons, I have a checklist and that's how I do the checks in the plane, which I didn't do today because my flying lesson got cancelled again. It's been a good week. I'm happy with how it's gone. Uh, there were some very low moments and there have been some very exciting moments. Last but not least, I'll be looking for someone else to join the Asheville team. I want somebody to come in and repurpose um, all our content, like what you're watching now for Facebook 
and to start to create the TikTok reels again. We were doing quite well with TikTok for a while, but our circumstances have changed and it's not something that we've been on top of. I can't do it, the existing team can't do it. We can't just add it to the workload. It's very difficult to interview people for these type of job roles because, you know, somebody may be the right fit and they might have the right mentality, but they may need to learn do we have anyone who has the time to teach them? And I need to find a way to interview people for that role where I can actually determine if they can actually do the job I need to be done. YouTube is one thing, but repurposing content for Facebook is another thing altogether. It's completely different. The videos are a lot shorter. They're a different format and it's all about judgment. You have to have the judgment to know what's great to get people to watch it so they don't click off. Like when a guy's in, in front of the screen talking for three minutes and 28 seconds non-stop. And before I sign off, I wanna remind all of you to download the Kalana app, use it to search and compare to find a great price for all your gaming and tech needs. And that's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 133. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a Nashville video you may not have seen before and click here for last week's episode, which was number 132. Now I'm gonna share my little toy collection with you. L860, there's the only Asheville Arctic I've got now. A 586 loading shovel, Volvo tipper, a 566.